Mexico. Now, uh, we're going to a training, uh, not a training that we're attending, but a training that I'm participating in giving. Um, so, uh, I'm hoping it's less people than, uh, than I was told because I'm, I have less printed material than I thought I would. Um, but that's okay. So what I think is really tough is uh, February is a tough month for people because uh, January gets all the hype and February is very short. It's typically like this, miserable and dreary, depressing, dangerous, because it's raining. <laughs> You're not there's, dramatic about it at all. <laughs> there's flash floodings everywhere. Anyway, uh, but professionally people, uh, you know, we, we get we get down and we are, um, you know, we have the, the New Year's resolution or the goal freshly in our mind and uh, plenty of proof by now that we didn't stick to our, to our action plan. Um, so I was reading something yesterday or heard somewhere that it takes only 17 days for you to forget or give up on uh, your your goal or your action plan and that, I thought that that was interesting because I've never heard it put that way and I don't know if that's true or who came up with that but uh, but it's it's like think about it if, if if 17 times you don't do what you said you were going to do at some point you're just going to be like well what the bleep let it go you know it's I'm not good at it I'm not gonna be able to make it you know, this isn't, this isn't for me. That's not for me. You know, I tried and turns out that working out every day just isn't for me, you know, or making minimal but measurable progress or movement toward my goal just isn't for me. So people give up and February is sort of like that reality check, I think for lots of us. So the training that I'm doing is for uh, people who have their own business inside of a larger company. So the way we always say with uh, entrepreneurs that we work with is we always tell them that their their brand is the platform on which they stand. It's supposed to hold them. In this particular case, we're gonna tweak that a bit and we're going to let them know that the brand that they're standing on is, um, is, is, the, is the company that's created this really incredible, fantastic uh, brand and is continuing to, uh, to develop that with real good tools and really good information, technology, um, the, the right training, all of those components are in um, inside the, the, the parent company, so to speak. And now each one of these individuals is almost like taking a seat uh, on that platform and creating their own brand, their own expression. Because one of the things that we always say, Steph, you and I, is that we always tell people, you have a brand, whether you know it or not. So how do you work work that out? How do you represent that inside of a company? And actually, you would, you know, you are in that same position. Uh, what I feel that same way about myself, even though it's a little bit counterintuitive, maybe for others to to see that is that. Even though the name of the company is my name, I represent the company. You know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, and we've done a lot of hard work on sort of like differentiating personal values versus company values. Yes. And how do you sort of embody and see yourself right. in the company's values um, as well as live through your own. And like right. almost adapt your own values, not necessarily to the values of the company, but seeing your own values inside of the values Absolutely. of the company. Yeah, how, does, how do you express that? How do you take that on? How do you stand as a as a as an agent or as a representative or even as an employee when when there's employees um, 
in your own sort of in your own brand, if you will, while representing the company's brand. So that's really what today is going to be about. And I have all the time in the world to do it. I've got five minutes. It's fine. <laughs> it's gonna be great. We're gonna nail it. <laughs> It's really not. And that was really surprising. <laughs>